Welcome to episode 21 of Win the Day. Hope you're feeling good because I'm feeling very good today. There's a lot of really awesome things happening in the world right now. So wherever you are tuning in from or watching from, I hope everything with you is going great. Episode 21, the title is You've Got to Risk It to Get the Biscuit. You've got to risk it to get the biscuit. Before we get into all the good stuff in this episode, I wanted to quickly share some news. The day one mastermind is completely sold out. But don't worry if you missed your chance to reserve your place. We will be running it again in the future. So to get on the wait list to make sure you get the notifications for the next time we reveal the dates, just email info at jameswit.com and let us know that you would like to be added to the wait list for that. All right, the quote for today's episode comes from a Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg and says, the biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that's changing really quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. In this episode, we're going to be talking about something that sounds negative, but it's actually the key to unlock pretty much everything you want in life. Let's quickly think again about that episode quote from Mark Zuckerberg. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. The only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. And unfortunately, the word risk has a negative connotation associated with it. But when we talk about risk, let's start off by talking about a few things, four scenarios that we're not talking about. They might sound risky at face value, but they're not what we're talking about in this episode as a definition of risk. The first one, scenario one, dating someone who is toxic and destructive to your life because you believe you can change them. Number two, starting a business without doing your due diligence because you think you already know it all. Number three, maxing out your credit cards because you believe the law of attraction will look after you. And number four, not focusing on your fitness because you might get hurt. Those four scenarios are far more common than you think, and I bet you can probably think of a few on your own. The misconception with risk is that it's something undertaken that is dangerous. Yet a better definition of risk might be an opportunity that can significantly enhance your situation while carrying a possibility of failure. But let's face it, pretty much everything we do in our pursuit of growth and our pursuit of self-mastery carries the risk of failure in the short term. However, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be tainted with the same brush of what are generally just bad decisions, like the four scenarios we mentioned earlier. There is a huge difference between risk in the sense of what we're talking about in this episode and bad decisions that are made every single day by people who will sadly have to struggle with the consequences. And generally, people who make these bad decisions have made a habit out of it, so it keeps happening over and over again, even though they don't know why. The main thing that stops people from getting outside of their comfort zone is this closely linked component of risk, which is a fear of failure. So let's quickly explore the concept of risk and failure in more detail. The very first one, all right, failure. Contrary to popular belief, failure should not be viewed as something so terrifying that it causes inaction. It's the pursuit of failure. Not just being afraid, it's the pursuit of failure that has created the most dominant, the most wealthy companies in the history of civilization, embracing innovation, pushing society forward, and raising standards of living for people all over the world. In fact, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos once revealed his own experience with failure. Bezos said, I've made billions of failures at Amazon, literally. I've made billions of failures at Amazon, literally. That's coming from arguably the most effective business leader in the world who from his own garage built an online bookstore to become the most valuable company on the planet. Not the most valuable bookstore on the planet, the most valuable company on the planet in any industry that you can think of. On the condition that you learn from failure and rise once more, your ability to seek it out is one of the greatest assets you can have. On the condition that you learn from failure and rise once more, which is what we talk about with persistence, your ability to seek out failure is one of the greatest assets that you can have. And this is where having a growth mindset is essential. 
Number two, risk. So we spoke about failure, let's talk about risk. And again, contrary to popular belief, risk carries with it significant upside and its probability of failure can be mitigated. For any situation, you can maximize the potential upside and minimize the potential downside. How do you do that? Well, of course, you've got your own expertise, so you can use your own due diligence to apply to whatever situation you're faced with. You can also employ the services of someone who is a professional or a specialist in that field. If you don't know anything about accounting or whatever you need for that particular industry, you can go and hire a professional. Or you could also seek the counsel of a mentor, or you could seek counsel from a mastermind of your peers, or you could do all of those things. That will significantly increase your upside and reduce the probability of downside. Think about when SEAL Team 6, the Navy SEALs, came knocking for Osama bin Laden in the middle of the night. It was a huge risk, but they spent months. In fact, they spent years, if you think about the CIA involvement in the operation too. So they could maximize their potential upside while minimizing their potential downside. But even with all their planning, they still lost a helicopter on the mission, but the carefully planned risk eliminated the most dangerous planet on the world, making it a safer place for all of us. If you're faced with a decision and you can't identify any upside or it's minuscule, it's a bad decision, not a risk. That's really important, so let me say that again. If you are faced with a decision and you cannot identify any upside or the upside that you do identify is minuscule, it is a bad decision, not a risk. If you wanna be successful, in life, if you want to be successful in business, you need to put your heart, your wallet, and your time on the line every now and then for what you believe is the greater good. In a letter to shareholders, Jeff Bezos once wrote, I believe we are the best place in the world to fail. We have plenty of practice. And a lot of people, a lot of the investors in particular, it might freak them out how much Bezos or how excited he gets about the prospects in pursuit of failure. But clearly, if you look at the Amazon stock price, historically, it's absolutely uh, phenomenal. So I think at this stage, they're pretty much keen to let Jeff do whatever he wants to do. And if we think again about that episode quote from Mark Zuckerberg, the biggest risk is not taking any risk. And 13 years ago, at the age of 23, Mark Zuckerberg became the youngest self-made billionaire in the history of the world. So he's worth listening to when he talks about ingredients for success. Those who don't take any risk are the ones who are perennially making bad decisions in their own lives, doing things like keeping all their money in the bank because they think that is the best strategy for long-term wealth creation, which we know is not the case. Perhaps investing in companies like Amazon and Facebook would be a better use of your money. And we'll go through an idea. I'm not <laughs> giving financial advice to your unique circumstances. I've got a whole post, a whole episode on that, how to become a financial winner. You can go and click on that. Go and listen to that podcast. Watch that episode on YouTube for a detailed idea of how to become a financial winner. Both Bezos and Zuckerberg are acutely aware that every failure increases their chance of hitting a home run, as Amazon and Facebook have done with numerous innovations that have propelled them from risky startups to being two of the most valuable companies in the history of civilization. And think about how different these companies are. If you go and look back at Facebook and Amazon three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, to see how different their business models, how different their platforms actually appeared, you would be amazed at how much they have embraced this idea of failure and carefully calculated risk. So to compliment Zuckerberg and Bezos and all the other modern day tech noguls, let's think about what Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, obviously I'm a huge Napoleon Hill fan. Napoleon Hill once said, those who will not take a chance seldom have one thrust upon them. Those who will not take a chance seldom have one thrust upon them. Anytime I get the urge to stay in my comfort zone, I read that quote and it lights a fire under me. So now that we properly understand risk, let's flip the script on those four earlier scenarios that we spoke about to illustrate what might be a better course of action and a more appropriate use of risk. Scenario one that we spoke about, the bad decision, was dating someone who is toxic and destructive to your life because you believe you can change them. 
Or perhaps a better but still risky decision might be to spend more time with someone who you sense a deep connection with and allow each of you to explore those feelings. If you bring out the best in each other and your time together forms the seedlings of love, you will have to put your heart on the line as you commit to each other, which putting your heart on the line if you've ever been in love is probably the greatest risk that you can take. But it might just be the best partnership you ever form. So compare that to the initial scenario of dating someone toxic and destructive in your life, hoping that you're going to change them over time. Which of those two scenarios would you prefer? All right, scenario two, we spoke about the bad decision, starting a business without doing your due diligence because you believe you already know it all. Well, perhaps a better but still risky decision would be to identify a problem that's faced by many people around the world and then identify a product or service to solve that problem. You seek the counsel of both a business mentor and a mastermind of your peers to help figure out what you don't know about the industry and its potential complexities. Your business has no assurance of success because let's face it, no business has any assurance of success, but you are strengthened from the collective wisdom and launch a business that could make all of your dreams come true while helping many, many people in the process. Compare that to the scenario that we spoke about before, about going all in because you think you already know it all. And as we go through these scenarios, think again, we're focusing here on maximizing the upside while minimizing the downside. Scenario three, the bad decision was maxing out your credit cards. Wow, how common is this one? Because you believe the law of attraction will look after you. I cannot tell you how many times that I have been told of people doing this. Perhaps a better but still risky decision is to retain 15% from every single paycheck that you get and invest it via dollar cost averaging into a fund that tracks the index. That enables you to also harness the power of compound interest. And while the media outlets try to constantly bombard and rattle you with reports of global uh, global meltdowns in markets around the world, you stay the course because of your goals and professional advice that you have obtained. And the final scenario, number four, the bad decision, not focusing on your fitness because you believe you might get hurt. Perhaps a better but still risky decision would be if you're time poor and stressed from work, you decide that yoga might be the best form of exercise for you because of the mental and physical health benefits. Even though you've never done a yoga class before, you turn up and you ignore your ego and you go at your own pace until you feel comfortable progressing with the technical movements. There is of course the risk that you fall flat on your face, but a few months later, it might just be the very activity, or maybe even a few weeks later, it might just be the very activity that restores balance in all areas of your life and you might get a few healthy friendships along the way. All of those four scenarios that we have spoken about carry some degree of risk, but without risk, there is no reward. You've got to risk it to get the biscuit. I'm good friends with champion golfer Adam Scott, the Aussie, and his caddy, John Lamonti, who is an American from Florida. So every year when they play the Genesis Invitational here in LA, it's at Riviera Country Club. So we always get free tickets to go along and cheer on Adam and John. It's an absolutely beautiful course. It's a very exclusive country club. So just uh, having them open up the doors for the general public to get in there and have a glimpse is a pretty amazing experience. This year, Adam Scott and his caddy, John, they won the Genesis Invitational, beating the likes of Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, and all the other best golfers in the world. And in doing so, won 1.7 million US dollars in the process. Afterwards, we went out to dinner with Adam and John to celebrate the win. And I was so curious, I had to ask them, what were they thinking on the 18th tee? They were winning by two shots. They had thousands of people on each side of the fairway and thousands more people around the green at the end of the 18th and tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people watching on TV around the world. I said, what were you thinking as you approached the tee on the 18th for the last hole of the entire tournament? And what they said, I just, I'll never forget this. They said, we were just focused on the next shot. We were just focused on the next shot. I love that. They didn't worry about the pressure. They didn't worry about the noise and all the other things they couldn't control. And believe me, there were many hecklers out there on the course. All they did was focus on the next shot, what they could do to maximize the upside while minimizing the downside. 
Their drive on the 18th tee, so on the 18th hole, their drive at a time when you'd think he'd really be feeling the pressure, it split the fairway. It was right down the middle, one of the best shots that he had hit through the entire tournament. Absolutely clutch. This is a guy, Adam Scott, who had not only won that tournament before in 2005, 15 years ago, which is a nice testament to his longevity in the sport, but he's also won the Masters at Augusta, which is probably the most exclusive golf tournament. So this is a guy who is so mentally strong. All winners have a habit of being comfortable in that risk. To finish, let's dive into a passage from Napoleon Hill, who has a real knack for telling it in a great way. Napoleon Hill said, Success always involves risk. You must take a chance by investing your time, money, and effort. It pays to be thoughtful and deliberate in your analyses of opportunities, but don't let timidity hold you back. Because you have worked hard to develop those things you must risk, it is natural for you to place a high value on them. But what good are they if you do not put them to use? You will recognize opportunity only to the extent that you are willing to consider risking your time, money, and effort. Being confident gives you the courage to face risk and act when opportunity arises. No one on earth is going to force success upon you. You will find it only to the degree that you actively seek it out. You will find it only to the degree that you actively seek it out. Powerful stuff. Hopefully now you've reframed the idea of risk and failure. Remember, you've got to risk it to get the biscuit. That's all for episode 21. If you're enjoying the show, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with other people who you think might benefit from all the lessons that we're talking about here on the Win The Day show. Get out there and win the day. Until next time, onwards and upwards, always. Come on, come on.